Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at noon. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. I'm Christine Stanwood. Four people are displaced after a house fire in Jamestown this morning. It happened in the 600 block of 1st Street West just after 2 a.m. Jamestown firefighters say heavy smoke was coming from the home when they arrived. Crews were on the scene for about three hours. The American Red Cross also responded to help the four adults displaced by the fire. The Red Cross says the home will not be livable for some time, but belongings in the home were not lost. A damage assessment is pending and the cause of the fire is still under investigation. A teen driver was given a ticket and a man was given a ride to the hospital after a crash in West Fargo. It happened last night at the intersection of 33rd Avenue and 6th Street West. Police say the teen was turning onto 6th Street when her SUV hit another car. The driver told officers she did not see the other car because her windshield was fogged up and she was in a hurry to get to work. The driver of the other car sustained a large cut to his head and was taken to the hospital by FM ambulance. Now the juvenile refused medical treatment and was cited for care required. A Fargo man will spend nine and a half years in prison for his role in a pair of liquor store robberies and several other crimes across the area. Carlos Bethel pleaded guilty to robbing the bottle barn on South University Drive in the spirit shop off 13th Avenue last September. As part of a plea agreement, he and, co and a co-defendant also admitted to participating in seven other crimes in the area, including a home invasion, burglaries, setting fire to dumpsters, pistol whipping, and conspiracy to distribute marijuana. Authorities are still looking for this missing Moorhead man. His name is Todd Logan and was last seen Saturday afternoon. We spoke with the Sheriff's Department in Alexandria today, and they say the search continues and are still looking for help from the public. He is believed to be near Stoas Lake in northwest Douglas County. Logan's family told police they are concerned for his welfare because he wasn't acting like himself. Logan has blonde hair, glasses, and a slight mustache. He was last seen wearing black shiny track pants and a tannish colored t-shirt. Now, if you have any information, you're asked to contact the Douglas County Sheriff. The refugee resettlement situation in Fargo is now being discussed at a statewide level. Yesterday on 630 Point of View, North Dakota House Majority Leader Al Carlson said he would consider suing the federal government over bringing more refugees to Fargo and North Dakota in general. Tennessee has already sued the federal government over this program on 10th Amendment grounds. Texas and Alabama have also done so, but on narrower grounds. And we believe that the 10th Amendment is, is, was there for a reason. All those powers not granted to the federal government belong to the states. And, and we need to make sure that we are not run over like a freight train. And I think in Tennessee, I read the article you sent me, they did the right thing. Valley News Live is reaching out to North Dakota Attorney General Wayne Stengem for his take on the issue. We're also looking for reaction from Lutheran Social Services in Fargo. So check back for updates tonight on Valley News Live at 6. The FM area continues to grow, but not quite as much as last year, according to the Home Builders Association of Fargo-Moorhead. The HBA released the first quarter building permit report today. The FM Metro showed a 7% decrease in housing permits, dropping from 124 to 115. Moorhead saw similar numbers to last year in housing starts, but remodeling has gone up to 82% and nearly doubling value from last year. While Fargo saw a big increase in housing permits going from 20 to 52, the majority of those were single family homes and its housing permit value is over three times higher than last year. Now in West Fargo, the housing starts outpaced last year's strong start. Single family construction increased 44% and remodeling stayed relatively steady. Overall total building permits were up 10% and total value across all communities through first quarter was up 85% through March. The major value increase is due to new commercial, commercial remodeling and public permits taken out in the first quarter. Well, it's another gloomy day and there's rumors that we might be seeing snow in our upcoming forecast. Let's check in with meteorologist Robert Hahn to find out. Robert? Uh, gloomy for many of us, but not so gloomy for folks off to the uh, north and northeast. Some sunshine up across the north and northern portions of Minnesota. That has allowed temperatures to warm up to 
around 50 in the Bedette area, 48 in Roseau, 48 in Thief River Falls, still socked in the clouds here in Fargo, and 42 degrees, some upper 30s stretching from Wadena through Lakes Country and over towards Valley City and Jamestown. Winds out of the east primarily around 10 to 20 miles per hour, some occasional stronger gusts, and those will continue throughout much of the day. There are the clouds, but you can see the breaks in the clouds off towards the north and the northeast. And that's why we're seeing those warmer temperatures underneath the clouds that we do have. Not a whole lot of precipitation, but you could see a sprinkle or two up in the uh, Devil's Lake Basin and possibly moving up towards uh, Langdon and Kandu here in the next little while. For the most part, most of us will stay dry outside of maybe a few moments of drizzle. Today, getting into the 50s, being optimistic that we get into the 50s here in Fargo with that very slight chance for a sprinkle at a few locations tomorrow, Southern Valley could see a little bit of rain. How is the rest of the week looking? End of the weekend? We'll let you know coming up in just a few minutes. Okay, thanks Robert. Mm -hmm. A new analysis finds automakers are beating expectations with more fuel efficient offerings. According to a study by the Consumer Federation of America, automakers are doing more than they have ever to meet national fuel efficiency standards. With 56% of available 2016 models matching or succeeding today's targets. It found vehicles achieving more than 30 miles per gallon in on road tests compromise, comprise about 13% of available models this year, compared to just 1% in 2008. Meanwhile, CFA's new consumer survey found the vast majority of Americans want fuel efficient vehicles despite current low gas prices with 81% saying gas mileage will be an important consideration when shopping for a new car. Microsoft's WordFlow keyboard is a native feature on the Windows Phone. Now Microsoft has released a version for the iPhone. Just like on Windows Phones, the new iOS version of WordFlow lets users tap or swipe to type out words and intelligently predict words for sentences. But it also includes some Instead extra additions going... not available on Windows Phones. There's a one-handed mode allowing you to swipe or tap out words by moving the keyboard to the side in an arc shape. Users can also customize the keyboard background with their own photograph. The WordFlow keyboard for iOS is now available for free in the App Store. Facebook is reportedly working on a standalone camera app in an effort to get its more than 1.5 billion users to share more stuff. The Wall Street Journal reports the app will support live streaming as well as photos and video. This comes as more users are checking the social media site on a regular basis, but are sharing and posting less about their lives. The aim of the standalone camera app would be to get users to stay on Facebook longer. And of course, remember to like Valley News Live on Facebook to follow the latest news, weather and breaking news updates anytime on your feed. Just search Valley News Live, like our page, and you'll stay informed all day. Well, instead of cutting into someone's chest, surgeons have found an alternative way to open heart surgery. But next, we take another look at whether to plan your day. You're watching Valley News Live on TV, online, and on the go. Always on, wherever you are, whenever you need to know, Valley News Live. 